All right then, gang, we've seen how we can use states in components, and we've also seen briefly how to update that state by clicking on a button. And to do that, we use an on-click event handler. Now, if you've used React before, this is gonna look almost identical with one small difference that has a big effect. The dollar sign right here on the event. Now, we've seen that before when we created a component or even used the use style hooks. And remember, we said that whenever we see one of these dollar signs, that marks out a lazy loading boundary too quick so it knows where to split the code into chunks and serve them on demand to the browser. In the case of event handlers, that means it can split up any event handler functions like this into separate chunks. And then only when we go to click on this button, will that chunk be downloaded to the browser. And that in turn, means that we don't have to download it initially when we first load the website. So when Quick is rendering the components on the server, it serializes all of this information about the event listener into the HTML page so that the HTML contains the information needed to download that chunk when we do click on the button. We can take a look at that by inspecting one of the buttons in the browser. And when you do that, you should see this path attached to the button telling Quick where to get that chunk from. I'm gonna demo this by reloading the page, first of all, then opening up the network tab so we can see what JavaScript is being downloaded. Now, once you've done that, pay attention to this section on the right here when I click on the button. And you can see that when I click it, it downloads that extra JavaScript associated with that click event. So that's the theory behind these lazy loading event handlers. Now let's have a look at some more examples. So what I'm gonna do is go to the contact page and make a little form in here so that we can use event handlers on those form elements when a user types into them. All right then, so what I'm gonna do is just paste in a quick, simple form down here so you don't have to watch me type it out. So we have a form, then we have a label wrapping the first input and the span to say your name. This is of type text. And I put the attribute down here on the next line because I'm gonna add more later on and it stops it going off the page. So that's the first one for the name. The second one, is a label wrapping a span and this time just a text area. So just two input fields. And then also we have a button at the bottom to submit the form. So nothing special going on there at the minute. What I am gonna do before we start attaching events to the form itself is I'm going to add another button here, I think. So let me do that. And then I'm gonna attach a click event to this button. Now, when we click on this button, it's gonna show the form. So initially, when we first load the page, I want the form to be hidden, but then when we click on the button that says something like show form or contact me, then it's gonna show the form. And we're gonna do that by adding a click event to the button and toggling a bit of state. And that way we can conditionally output this form. So let me say, contact me right here, first of all. Then let's create some state up here. So I'll come down here and say const form visible is equal to use signal because it's just one value that we need. And then inside here, we'll set that to be false to begin with. So this is the initial value of form visible. Now to conditionally output something based on some state, we can say down here, curly braces, and then whatever thing we want to evaluate, in our case, form visible. So we can say form visible and then double ampersand and then parentheses and then I'm gonna scoot that onto the next line and then at the bottom parentheses and curly braces. And let's move that in. So what this does is evaluate this and only if this is true, will it evaluate the right hand side. So it will only output the right hand side template if this is true. If it's false, then we won't see this in the page. So that's how we can conditionally output something very similar to React so since this is false to begin with, we're not gonna see this on the page if I go to the contact page. Um, okay, we do. So that's because stupidly, it's not form visible, it's form visible dot value. I always forget to put the value thing on. So remember, I said when we use use signal, we have to say dot value to get that value. So now this should be false. Let's come over here. And yet we can't see the form initially. If I change this to be true, then we should see the form which we do, awesome. Okay, so change that back to false. And then what I'll do is attach the onClick event handler. So we've seen this in the previous video, it's just onClick and then at the end of any event handler, we do a dollar sign like so. And remember that tells Quick that we can lazy load whatever is inside this handler function. So 
curly braces, and then we're gonna fire a function when a user clicks on that button. And all this is gonna do is turn the value of this thing right here to be true. So I can say form visible dot value is equal to true. That's simple. So now when I click on that button, it turns this to true and we should see the form. Let's try it out. Yep, and that'll work, awesome. Okay, so next I just wanna add a few styles so the form doesn't look terrible. So come to the contact.css. I'm gonna paste these in. These are from my repo, so feel free to grab them. So we say form, give it a margin top, then input and text area, display block, width 400 pixels, bit of padding and margin, a border and a border radius, and the text area, we give a height as well. Save that and take a look. And that's looking a little bit better. What I'd also like to do is style the button as well, but this time it's gonna be a global style not specific to this component because there's gonna be buttons elsewhere as well. So let's go to the global CSS file and paste this in down here again from the course files. So button, we give it a background color, which is the red variable up here. Strip out the border, give it some padding, border radius, color the text white, cursor pointer, and font family pop-ins, dead simple. But that is gonna look a little bit nicer. So we have this button now, and also this button. And also, if we go to the home page, those buttons are styled as well. We're gonna remove those later, so it doesn't really matter, but it's starting to look a little bit nicer now. Okay, cool, so that's working. Now we can see how we can use these click events. Let me get rid of these. These click events right here. Let's now look at some form events. So for example, when a user starts typing into an input or eventually submits the form as well. So let's think about this for a minute. What do we wanna do? Well, we wanna track two values, this one, and we also wanna track this one. Now we could make two pieces of state using use signal, or we could use use store, and we could have an object which tracks both of these different things. So a property for each one. And that's what we're gonna do. So let me say down here, const, and we'll call it form state. So form state is equal to use store. Click on that to import it. And inside here to begin with, we have an object and we're gonna have a name property so we can track the name and it's an empty string to begin with. And then also we're gonna have a message property which is also an empty string to begin with. So basically when a user starts typing into this input, I wanna update this property. When they start typing into the text area, I wanna update this property. So how do we do that? What event do we use now? Well, we use an event called on input. So I can say on input like so, and then a dollar sign. Again, just like the click event, where we had a dollar sign right here. And then we set that equal to curly braces, then a function, which fires. Now, what do we wanna do in here? Well, we wanna get the value that's inside the input and we wanna place it right here. So to get the value, we need the event object and we get that automatically in this function. So just pass it in, E, E, V, whatever you wanna call it. And inside here, I'm gonna say form, and it's actually form state, isn't it? Dot name, that's the thing we wanna update, is equal to something. Now normally I would say E dot target, which is the input, and then I would say dot value right here. Let me just close this so we've got more room. And normally that would get me the value inside this input, but because we're using TypeScript, it's basically saying here, look, we don't know that this event target is gonna have a value property. So what I need to do is put this in parentheses right here, e.target, and I need to cast it as an HTML input element. So I can say as HTML input element, like so. And it knows that that has a value property and we can grab that value. So now, when we start typing into this, every time we type a letter or any kind of key, it's gonna fire this function and it's gonna update the form state dot name property to be what is currently inside this input. And that's what this is right here, the value of the input, okay? So that's being stored inside the name. Now, what I'm also gonna do is copy that and do the same thing for the text area. So let me scoop this down onto the next line, like so. This time it needs to be the message property instead of the name, so dot message like so. So now we should be tracking those two inputs, or this input and this text area, but at the minute we wouldn't be doing anything with those values. Look, if I come over here and start typing in, yeah, it's tracking it, but we don't see that anywhere. So let's output them down here just so we can see that it's working. So underneath the button, I will do a paragraph tag and I'll output the name first of all, so form state dot name, and then underneath that, I'll duplicate this and change this to message. 
All right, so as we type now, these should be updated at the bottom. Let's try it out. Contact me, my name, Mario. Awesome, we can see that down here. And if I start typing in here, this is working as well. Cool. So now we're reacting to these input changes when we type into these different fields and we're updating the state using use store right here and these functions. And then we can see those updates down here. Cool. So that's the on input event. What about submitting the form itself? Well, we can have an on submit event listener. So on submit dollar sign is equal to something. And we have a function in here like so. So what do you want to do in this function? Well, normally we might send a post request or do something else with the data. All we're going to do for now is log the data to the console. So form state dot name, and then also form state dot message. All right. So what's going to happen if we try this? Let's come over here and inspect. So we can go to the console, first of all. All right. Let's type in any old junk here and click on send. And we saw it for a split second, didn't we? But then it refreshed the page. Now that refreshing of the page is the default behavior of a form when it's been submitted. And it's been submitted whenever we click on a button inside a form. So that event occurs. Yeah, we're logging this to the console and this is working. However, it's instantly then refreshing the page because that's the default behavior when we submit a form, not just in Quick, in any website. So what we want to do is prevent that default behavior. And we can do that inside Quick by using some kind of event modifier. And the way it works is by saying prevent default like so, and then a colon. And on what action do we want to prevent the default? Well, on the submit action. So now when we submit the form, it's going to prevent the default action of the page reloaded. And now if we take a look at this over here, type in anything, press send, we get that in the console and it doesn't reload the page. Awesome. So the last thing I want to do is I want to reset this form. Now we could do that using the event object. Where are we? We're here. We could use the event object and then get the target and use the, uh, the reset method on that so we can reset the form. Or what we could do is we could clear the state. So this stuff up here, and then when we clear the state, hopefully these things will clear as well. So let's give that a try. I'm going to say form state dot name is then equal to an empty string and then form state dot message is also equal to an empty string. Now, is this going to work? Press save. Let's submit the form. And no, it doesn't. It's cleared down here where we output the values, but not in the form. And that's because we've only got one way data binding going on right here. When we update the values in here, it's updating this. But when we update this, it's not in turn updating these things. So in order to get that two way binding, we can place the value prop right here and set it equal to whatever value we want it to have. Now that value is just going to be the form state dot name for this one. And then down here, the value is going to be equal to the form state dot message. And now when the form state is updated, the value will reflect that change. So if we save it and come over here, submit the form and now it clears. Awesome. So then my friends, now we've seen a few different events. We've seen click events, we've seen submit events, and we've seen on input events. So hopefully you're a little bit more comfortable with those now. We might use some more in the future. In the next lesson though, I want to move on to something called slots.